Outrocast. I'll throw it to Stephanie first with the two-parter. I'll say, uh, how are you? And how did you know that this film was done? And the reason I ask is because you just had, you know, 35 years of one of the biggest music legends ever with every personal setback possible at the same time. And you had to cover that in, you know, less than two hours. That's such a good question. I'm fine. It's first answer. Um, you know, it, the, making movies is like, it's like growing kids, you know, you're, you're never kind of done, but you get to the point where you're ready to let go. And I think that's where we got. We got to the point where we felt like everything that we wanted to say was said. We felt like, you know, Paris infused the movie with his with his style and and it was all cohesive. We really wanted to celebrate Billy's accomplishments, but we also wanted to be transparent about his struggles. Um so I think at a certain point you have to like release it into the universe and 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 hope everyone else loves it as much as you do. And I think we got to that spot. Same questions at you as well, Ms. Festa. I I, I don't know. Do, do I call you J E F? What what's the cool name for you? Um. Well, it's it's Jean. It's Jeannie. You could call me Jeannie. And um, I go by Elfont Festa. I go by the the the, the oh. two names. Um. Ms. So yeah, Jeannie. Just Jeannie's great. Well, and Jeannie, um, how are you and how do you know that the film was done? I uh, I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, and I feel the same way as Steph. You know, we it is uh, a, a, when we do these docs here at White Horse, which we've done so many, it's an overwhelming sense of responsibility to get it. Right. And we realize that these films are, um, you know, limited in the time frame that we're telling the story, meaning that right. it's, uh, you know, 90 minutes or, you know, whatever length of time that film is 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 intended for. So it's more of a um, poetry than prose. And I, I do feel that, um, uh, you know, we we came to this wonderful um, uh, conclusion with um everything that Paris wanted, which was to try to make a difference in society, point out um, things that are, point out all of our common denominators and point out, um, uh, you know, the things that need to, that we need to draw, bring together, which is knowing that we're all living on this planet as one and that it, this, we have to accept each other as who we are and, and that love conquers everything. And I think that we did that with this film. Got it. Now bring it back to Steph here. I mean, she called you Steph. I'm going to call you Steph, Stephanie. Oh, yeah, but anyway, uh, my first exposure to Billy Preston was Get Back, uh, Beatles kinds of stuff. But then I realized years later, oh, I had seen him with Clapton. I had seen him with the Rolling Stones, et cetera. Do you remember the first time you saw Billy Preston in action? Well, I grew up in L.A. in the 70s, so we were dancing in basement parties to Billy Preston then. You know, um, he was just another awesome musician, you know, on the playlist. So um, my experience with him was just loving his music and dancing to his music, you know, when I was a kid. Um, so I think that I, I, because I knew about the Beatles, but. I wasn't, I, you know, the, I was like eight or nine when the Beatles, you know, did their famous come to come to America thing. So Beatles mm -hmm. weren't really on my playlist when I was a kid. It was, a, it was more soul music. And so my introduction mm -hmm. to him was as a soul musician. Uh, Jeannie, same question at you. Did you know Billy Preston first as Beatles guy or soul music legend? Well, I probably knew my, I knew him first as the Beatles guy first and for first, that's the first time I was introduced to him. And then we bought all of his records. So we, um, as a kid growing up and I too grew up in LA, um, we then bought, um, we bought all of his, the, the record that he did with uh, Sam Cooke. And then we did, we bought um, Nothing From Nothing. I have these actual albums at my house. So it was really great to go through the record collection that I inherited from my dad. Um, and he was a huge, my father was a huge Sam Cooke fan. So um, anything that Sam 
uh, Cook uh, loved, my dad loved, and uh, and that's uh, was my first introduction to Billy, actually. And then we fell in love with him. So Jeannie, I had to ask that because I know that you worked on that Beatles documentary that eight days a week, and of course, Bee Gees and Pavarotti and et cetera. Uh, you're a music person by association, although there's, uh, you know, sharing Lamb Chop, all that. But were you always a music devotee or is that just an accidental niche that you wound up in? Um, I was always a music devotee. I think I was. I mean, the, you if you were if we were doing this at Zoom in my home, you would see my massive record collection because we I I love vinyl. So we are my husband I married somebody who loves vinyl as much as I do and uh and we have um a a, 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 co a collection that is all of what Billy Preston was so it's of all genres so we've got a a, a very extensive blue note uh a collection and as well as a um uh you know the heart just hardcore rock and roll to jet from from uh you know to Barbra Streisand to you know, I don't know, Def Leppard. So it's a very, very eclectic uh, um, uh, collection because I do, I do like the, I do like the art form. Right on. Now over to Steph. Similar question at you because your filmography has a mix of comedy, um, human rights elements to it, to social justice at the same time. So in other words, you could be funny but you can also be serious. It runs the gamut. There's not as much, say, a Foo Fighters you know, on I, your filmography. I married a music man. Um, I love music. I play drums. I, 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 I play guitar. Um, but for me, this opportunity was a chance to work with White Horse, with Nigel Sinclair, and with Jeannie and Nick. I mean, I'd never made a doc. So for me, this was my maiden voyage in this genre. And I feel so blessed that I had the opportunity to work with these guys who, like you said, are the pinnacle of music docs. I mean, they've been doing it so long, so well on so many different levels from the Apollo to, like you said, Pavarotti. It's, so for me, this, I just went to grad school. You know what I mean? I feel like I graduated with a degree um, from Whitehorse. Um, and uh, I can't wait to do it again. Being a person who always reads the liner notes and looks to see who produces stuff, it's making me laugh that White Horse gets so many clearances from Dark Horse for this project. Well, Olivia Harrison is a is a, a executive producer on this. She knew Olivia knew, and that's part of Dark Horse, right? So, um, also, so Dark Horse, it's a division of Dark Horse. I didn't realize that. Well, Olivia Her that's that's her that's the that's their label, Dark Horse. But White Horse, Dark Horse. Oh, interesting. We never even oh, thought right. about I that. Oh, right. I never even thought of that. Oh, that's right. I never even, that's so that's so cool. I it just, that's so funny. I you know this uh, uh, just to get to Olivia Harrison because she should be noted here. She was just um, such a uh, is is a very great with story. New Billy. None of us knew Billy. Um, mm -hmm. she was, uh, at, at, uh, so on the camera there, pardon? So generous. Yeah. With, oh my God. You know, so generous. Photographs, archives, stories about George and, and Billy. Um, and his, and his archive and, and just her. And and Apple, just, obviously. Yeah, I, exactly. And, and in the relationship with, you know, she has a, a good relationship, obviously with Peter Jackson, who enabled us to get that beautiful footage. Um, of Billy, uh, you know, with concert for George. A star. I love Olivia. Harris. Star, yeah, oh. a star, generous, generous, and 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 uh, just great asset uh, as a producing partner with yeah. us. Well, it's cool to see that not only is Olivia involved in this, but Danny Harrison was an important part towards the end of Billy's life as well. So, meaning it was two generations of Harrisons, two generations of Beatles people that impacted or yeah. reverse impacted. For sure. So my, you know, as we're winding down here, this is a new project to us, the general public, to you both. Uh, it's been done for a while. And IMDb says great projects for both of you are coming up. So going to you first, Steph, are we allowed to know what's next or do we just have to wait for Hollywood re Reporter embargo? No, no. Well, first of all, I just want to shout out Exhibiting Forgiveness, which is still in theaters. It's... Um, 
I'm so proud of this movie. Um, Titus Kafar, who's an amazing painter, wrote and directed it. Um, Andre Holland, Anjanou Ellis, Andra Day. Please see it. We love it. Beautiful film. And yeah. then, yes. Gene I Zee can say that. It is a beautiful film. And it then, is. Anything with Andra Day is going to be great. That's a fact. And Anjanou. And uh, Andre. It's crazy. And yeah. then um, I have another movie coming out with the exquisite Daniel Deadweiler next year. Um, with Blumhouse for Universal called Woman in the Yard, which is a, quite a um, a new genre for me because it sounds it's scary, scary. Yeah, when they say Blumhouse, I assume scary. So it is horror, but innovative horror. Best yes. way to think of it. Yes, correct, correct. Okay, so yes. you are going to be continued uh, continuously and continually hard to pigeonhole to genres and kinds of projects. So I guess that's what so. I'm expecting. I guess so. I'm also starting the last two years of my tenure as the president of the Producers Guild and just really focused on elevating um, the value of producers and educating the public about what we do. Right. So you have the best screeners of anybody. That's what I'm learning. <laughs> I, I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, Jeannie, on your end, uh, there's a rumored Fleetwood Mac documentary that you may or may not be involved with. But are we allowed to know if that's yes. coming or what's next? Yes, that is coming. It is coming and it is next. And it's the their first uh, fully authorized by all of the entire band, um, uh, the definitive uh, Fleetwood Mac that will that that we're, it's in the works right now. OK, follow up question to that. Wait. Now, Billy Preston is a case where that was 35 years of high profile stuff. But mm -hmm. Fleetwood Mac has so many eras because you have the original Peter Green stuff. You have right. the replacement team era of the mid 80s kinds of stuff. We get all of those eras somehow shoehorned into two hours. Well, I wouldn't say shoehorned. Number one, <laughs> it will be a like like this is a, it will be it will be poetry rather than you know prose. So just you know be aware things will have to be truncated, but you will learn things that you didn't know that you thought you knew. I'm psyched. So oh. We will have insights that you didn't think that you what that 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 you knew. You know, so this is definitely. Uh, going to be a uh, insightful and an eye opening, and also a celebration of. I mean, one of the reasons that you even tell these stories, like the stories that we tell, is because of the music. So it can't just be about like you know the Michigan, right? <laughs> And I do want to also shout out Otis and Zelma, which is the Otis Redding movie with right. John Vega and Daniel Deadweiler, which Chan and Godfrey Peoples directing, which is probably our next movie. So there you go. Bravo, staff. Or yeah. music to come. Mm -hmm. And then I'm working on a narrative feature about the le a narrative feature with uh, focus features about uh, the legendary Keith Moon. Mm -hmm. OK, Keith Moon has been in the works since like the late 90s. Yes. I remember like Mike Myers was going to play him at one point and Jason. Oh, wow. was right. Play him. Yes. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is that continued one or a new one? It's a new it's it's I mean, you know, it's we have wow. the full uh, cooperation of of the who and every and the music. And so this is this is the one that, uh, you know, we're 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 moving forward with. I'm psyched to hear about that. So many wonderful projects coming up from both of you. So thank you for your time. And thank you for finally getting a documentary about Billy Preston made. I appreciate it. Thank you. Outrocast.